What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video today. And in this video, I have another unboxing. Had to improvise a bit of an interesting setup here as I left my tripod at home. I did that intentionally um, so that I wouldn't have to transport my tripod from my dorm room um, back home and back forwards and, you know, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Um, one less thing to worry about. But I had made an order with Panafox Toys not too long ago, and I was thinking that this package was going to come later than expected. But all of a sudden, it decided to go into Sonic mode, and it rushed here pretty quickly. So... <laughs> Yeah, I have this package in hand now, and we're just going to go ahead and open this up. So this is a bit of a retro unboxing once again here, as we have a couple of rare, I guess not rare, but just old school planes that that were recently released by Gemini Jets just this past year. Um, one of them was released over the summer, and then one of them was just announced. And I am having a very difficult time trying to get to this tape here, so sorry about that, guys. There we go. Not the most pleasant cut in the world right there, but this will have to suffice because this tape is very difficult to get open here. And that should be our door to get us in, and there we go. This thing is opened up. Let's pop in. So the small box here is both of them are in these small boxes. And we do have the invoice in here, so let me just verify that everything is in the correct orientation and everything is all applicable, which it indeed is, and that is awesome to see. All right, I see the first one up here, and take a look at this. We have the Gemini Jets 1 to 400 scale Frontier Convair 580. Beautiful model right here from Gemini Jets, and I love the box art on this with the Frontier um, real life image of the plane here from, I think that's Bob Palan XE. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that last name right, so if you are the gentleman that is watching this video, I do apologize if I butcher that. Um, but this was actually a recommendation from another collector who actually bought this plane for himself um, as part of a retro airport project that was Red River Aviation. I know I've been mentioning him a lot in my recent videos, but um, he kind of recommended me this model in a way. Um, not like a direct recommendation, but it was something that he liked and I thought it was something that interested me too. And then the second model in here, this is from the most recent Gemini Jets releases, and this one I am most excited for, the Gemini Jets 1-400 to scale Braniff L188 Electra, and oh my goodness, that, this box took a little bit of a beating here, I'm not sure if you can tell, I'll just try to zoom in the camera here just a little bit, but you can see, yeah, the box probably got roughhoused in shipping a little bit, so that does concern me. Um, initial inspection does not show any broken parts right away, so at least that's a good thing. Um, but then again, we are going to open that up and we're going to make sure that nothing is broken on that. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and move over to the unboxing. And here we go for the unboxing of the Gemini Jets 1 to 400 scale Frontier Convair 580. Once again, I love the box art design on this thing right here. This is very applicable. So we'll go ahead and take a look. So of course you have your standard Gemini Jet stuff up here. Then you have the real life image of this plane. Um, November 73117, I believe is a registration uh, photo by Bob Palan XE. I'm, not, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong again. So once again, I do apologize. Picture taken at Albuquerque Sunport in June of 1969. So there is a little detail right there. I'll go ahead and zoom into that and I'll just check the photo for fun to see if the registration is indeed matching, which I don't... looks like that's 73157 or something like that. I think they did 73117 if I'm not mistaken, so um, then again it doesn't really matter. The only difference between those two planes is of course the registration and all that, so take a look inside. There is the plane of course. You have that there in the plastic cradle. And obviously the little pamphlet down here, which I'll bring it into better view here since obviously I don't have my tripod. Once again, I'm kind of the king of improvising tripods here, but I think I made a design that worked out here pretty well. So on the back, we do have a 2022 release as expected. Nothing too unusual here. Item number on this is GJFFT1263. So this does lead me to believe this is perhaps a model that they intended to make a while ago, but then they never got around to doing it until um, this summer. So, so here we go. Take this out. Wow, <laughs> this is actually really nice. Definitely has a bit of a different feel to it than my Republic Convair, which was released a couple of years ago. Um, that was done in, I believe, the February 2020 releases, if I'm not mistaken. And here she is, the Frontier Convair 580 by Gemini Jets. Such a beautiful looking model right here. I love this thing to pieces already. 
Starting off at the front, we got the little anti-glare black nose right there. Obviously got the nose cone right up there at the front as expected. Then you got like the polished underbelly right there. You also have the little Jet Power 580 titles right there to advertise that this is a uh, Convair 580. This is a supposed to be a Convair 340, I believe, modified with Allison turboprop engines. So it made it just a little, a little bit faster, a little bit more powerful, a little bit more fuel efficient. Then you have the little Frontier titles up here at the top along with the blue cheat line that goes all the way across the fuselage. Then you have the yellow uh, crest on the tail along with the Frontier logo. Here's a quick look here at the front profile of it. You can see it looks a little bit to, to the right, a little askew to the right. This might just be a one-off defect here for, from Gemini Jets, but what I also do note is that the propellers are very, very low to the ground, like very. Actually, they're actually touching the ground too, especially on this uh, left side one here. So they spin freely when I hold them up like this, but if I bring it down here, they do end up touching the ground. I think the other one is probably like that. Actually, there is some ground clearance, which is good, maybe minimal, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Crap, that is a technical fault right there. We're gonna go ahead and fix that. <laughs> All right, we're back in good shape here, so that is a little bit of a... That's probably... That's on me, because uh, it was feeling pretty firm in there, and I spun that around a bit too much, so yeah, it was gonna fall off. So that one's on me. I'll take responsibility for that, but the good news is it fits in there pretty clean. No damage done to the model here. And we'll take a look here at the underneath of it, so go ahead and get us zoomed out just a little bit here. Again, a bit of an awkward position here, but we're going to make this work best we can. There's a Gemini Jets logo underneath along with the stand hole, and obviously all your other applicable details down here at the bottom, along with the little registration right there, November 73117. So one of these wonderful conveyors that Gemini has done, I would like for them to do a stall bass livery conveyor. I know that's been one that's been requested by a few retro collectors that I have talked to previously. Um, they would definitely like to see this Frontier Convair 580 Sol Bass livery, so hopefully that is done by Gemini Jets as well in the meantime. And actually just notice some um, overwing exit details right there. I didn't realize that the Convair had those, so uh, this must have been a probably a later rendition maybe. Maybe they've had them for much longer than I thought, but I don't know. I always thought these older planes never really had them, but I guess um, kind of disproven here. So yeah, another quick look here at some of the above wing details. A little black line right there as well. But otherwise, nothing nothing else too interesting to mention here with this particular model. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the second model for the unboxing. And here we go for the unboxing of the Gemini Jets 1-400 scale Braniff International Airways Lockheed L-188 Electra wearing the El Dorado livery. So this El Dorado livery, this is actually worn by a lot of the brand of planes from around the 1950s, um, 50s up until right around the doorstep of the jet age, right in, even in the early jet age, actually. Um, so a lot of these Electras wore them, uh, DC-3s, Convair 240s wore them, and even some of the early jets as well, like the 707 and even the BAC-111, which is a plane that I do need for my retro FSD project, preferably in that jelly bean livery. But um, this Electra right here, this did not fly to Sioux Falls. Um, um, an Electra that I did get for Christmas d did fly to Sioux Falls for, the, for a particular airline that I don't yet have in my collection. That'll be coming in the Christmas unboxing in just a couple of months. So crazy to think we're this close to um, Christmas already. So yeah, this is a model once again that I saw in the September releases in 200 scale. And when this was released in October in 400 scale, I was ecstatic. So take a look inside, there you see the model of course, and this beautiful all white box design. I've not seen the back of this thing yet, so uh, let's do just a quick box review. So you just have the Gemini Jets logo, no made for collectors by collectors slogan. Uh, you have the BI logo, this is actually a bit of a later iteration, this is from the Jelly Bean era all the way up until the Flying Colors era. Um, and then of course you have the image of the plane right here, Braniff, Lockheed L-188, then you have the registration, 1-400 scale die-cast model aircraft, and the item number down here which is GJBNF2090. Side of the box, pretty much your standard Gemini Jet stuff, um, all these sides are pretty much the same, and check this out right here, take a look at this, oh my, look at this logo right here, I love that thing, wow. Braniff International officially licensed product, so I'm hoping we get more Braniff planes. I would love to see a Jelly Bean Electra done, so Gemini Jets, please get on that. But otherwise, this is your standard Gemini Jet stuff. You have also a Lockheed Martin um, trademark here. 2022 release there in the bottom right, and of course I've read off the item number, which was GJBNF2090. So let us do this. Um, so again, the box is kind of damaged up here at the top, but I think what I was hearing was like the plastic cradle just kind of wobbling around there in the box. Um, as far as I know, I don't think the model has any damage, at least I hope. Take this thing out. 
Wow. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness gracious me. Damn, this thing is just... This thing is just unbelievable. Let me get a closer look at this. Wowzers. Wowzers, wowzers, wowzers. This thing is just unbelievable. I love this thing. My gosh. This is why I collect retro planes right here, ladies and gentlemen. This thing is just absolutely stunning from end to end. From the front to the back, everything in between, all the applicable details. This thing is just stunning. Highly recommend this model if you're looking for some Electras. My goodness, this thing is just... There are no words. There are no words to describe my um, feelings for this plane right now. This thing is just incredible. I am so happy to have my first brand of plane, and I'm really hoping that the next one will be for Retro FSD. DC-3, Convair 240. Um, I think the DC-6 as well. That was another plane I forgot to mention that wore this El Dorado livery from the 50s. Um, I'm at least hoping that I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, because that'd be kind of a bit unfortunate, but I think it's pronounced El Dorado, because that's what it looks like to me anyway. Um, but yeah, so the DC-6s also flew to Sioux Falls, and then eventually the Jets, the BAC-111, came in before they left Sioux Falls um, not long after. I think it was 1962 is when they left. But anyways, here is the Braniff International Airways L-188 Electra by Gemini Jets. My third Electra in my collection, and this is such a fantastic plane right here, so let's go and do a really good review on this. Get over all of the applicable details and everything in between, so let's take a look. Starting off with the front, you got a little black nose right here, you got the Braniff logo. Then your cockpit windows right here, the little eyebrow windows of course, then you have the beautiful dark blue sheet line that goes across, got this little red accent up at the top as well. The white crown as well, the Braniff International Airways, although it's actually not white, it's kind of more of like an off-white color, like a creamish color. Um, the brand of International Airways titles, the International Wonderful Cursive Font, I love that. And then you also have the registration November 9 or 709 or Charlie. And you also have the flying brand of Electra 2. This is actually a later iteration of the Electra because what happened was a few Electras broke up in mid flight. Unfortunately, these were um, fatal incidents. Um, so they ended up having to modify the Electras a little bit, and thus um, I think they changed like the wings, the engines, and I think the airframe, they also changed that, the fuselage. Um, but basically a lot of modifications were done to the Electra following those mid-air breakups, and thus the Electra continued to fly and had a very prosperous life. So this is a later iteration. I know Aero Classics did the original Electra livery that the... Uh, I'll go ahead and pop up a picture here on your screen as to show you what I'm representing here, and then obviously you can compare it to this particular tail. This is really the only difference here. And then obviously we'll take a look here at some of the other details. So once again, another look here at the underneath of the plane. This thing is all polished and everything. This thing is just unbelievable. Take a look at that, guys. Look how that shines there in my very bright environment here. Um, all the overhead lights are on, of course. And obviously there are the engines, um, the propellers, which do spin. They do feel pretty loose, so I'm not going to spin them too much, and hopefully we won't have another unfortunate incident that took place like with the Frontier. Also a little beacon light right there. You can see it there right above the um, B there and Braniff on this side. And obviously the horizontal stabilizers, those are polished as well. Very, very nice plane right here by Gemini Jets. And that will do it for this review. So once again, a bit of an interesting setup here with my um, tripod situation. I know I have a lot of those in my videos, but the one thing you have to know about me is that I'm kind of an impatient man. Um, as soon as I get boxes in, as soon as I get an order in that I know I'm going to be able to open right away, I am going to be unboxing that straight away, no matter the circumstances, unless it's something very extreme, like if I'm not home or something, or if I don't have my camera with me or anything like that, then that's when it will pose a problem. But in this case here, I was able to figure out something, make it work to an extent, and definitely have a still interesting video for you guys so beautiful frontier convair right here and also the brand of electra both of these super fantastic models i would highly recommend both if you're looking for some retro planes in your collection highly recommend these models so definitely make sure to go get them if you can they're still available at many retailers um midwest model store panda fox toys waffle collectibles um i think they're still working on getting the brand of electra but i know for sure they have the frontier convair um, but you can still find them at a lot of retailers so definitely make sure to go get them if you are looking for them now because this unboxing definitely may have interested a few people in getting these so make sure to go get them if you can otherwise i hope you enjoyed this video so with that being said that is the end of the video thanks for watching and i will catch you in the next one